Today, I have traversed the European part of Russia to face the mighty Ural Mountains. And here in Nizhny Tagil, I've encountered the wildest steel beast that I've seen so far in action. Normally, I deal with smaller weapons in my vlog, not much bigger than me. But today, please welcome TOS 1A, heavy flamethrower system. In essence, the TOS 1A is a multiple launch rocket system. But it looks quite peculiar and thus puzzles many specialists and amateurs. We should solve this riddle. So let's unpack the box and see what's inside the TOS 1A system. In the middle, we see two main elements that are the core of the system. They are the launch vehicle and the transloader vehicle. But it is equally important to see other parts. So we keep on ransacking the box and unfold the command post vehicle and finishes the row a check and test vehicle. Let's learn more about each element. According to the documents, the TOS 1A is the system designed for engagement of the manpower in the open and in shelters, disabling military equipment and armament, but also for destruction of buildings and fortifications. And that sounds quite normal for a powerful multiple rocket launcher. But what embarrasses many specialists is its main characteristic, namely its firing range. It seems surprisingly short, from meager 600 meters to 6,000 meters. Compare it to ranges of other multiple rocket launchers that go as far as 70 to 90 kilometers. And as is the case with the Russian 9K515 Tornado S system, even 120 kilometers. 6,000 meters versus 120,000 meters. Puzzling, isn't it? Let's have a closer look at the launch vehicle and find out the reason for this discrepancy. The first impression of the vehicle is that we are dealing with a tank without a gun, but featuring a specific turret. And this impression is correct. The chassis of the system is based on the T90 or T72 MBT, with all the elements, including power plant, transmission and armory, the same as the tank has. The launch vehicle has a crew of three and a combat weight of 46 and a half tons. The tank turret has been replaced with a new protected power-operated launcher with three rows, each of eight 220mm rocket launching tubes. The launcher is protected from small arms fire and fragments. Moreover, the transloader vehicle also has the same running gear, is very protected and boasts extraordinary cross-country performance. Here, the original turret has been replaced by two racks, each of 12 rockets. The racks sit under armored covers while in transit, and they are removed using a hydraulically operated crane positioned between the racks. The crane has a maximum lifting capacity of 1000 kgs and is operated by remote control. But why would the system need such a serious protection? Because it operates in a dangerous proximity to the front line. This fancy dressed car is a command post vehicle. It does reconnaissance, calculates data, collects meteorological information, provides target designation to launchers, assesses results, and reports to the high commander. The crew is three commander, senior officer, and a drone operator. This Ural truck is a test and check vehicle that helped prepare the TOS 1A to its mission. Its tasks are to calibrate all the assemblers, tools and equipment, check their parameters and monitor their health. It has special tools for all the equipment, radio stations, sensors, sighting devices. After the mission, the vehicle does the necessary maintenance, like launching tube cleaning, some repairs including welding and other works. Here I feel a good structure, just look at all the boxes. They're all classified and labeled. Due to modular construction, this equipment can be mounted on different platforms, creating either mobile or stationary test facilities. Today is our lucky day. We have a great opportunity to see the system in operation. So let's take a ride. While we are moving to a firing position, I'll tell you more about the system. The TOS 1A is attached to mechanized infantry or tank units or can even operate independently. They are the only systems as powerful and efficient as a MLRS that are employed in close contact with the enemy. 
The loading process looks quite simple and intuitive. It takes roughly half an hour for experienced crews to place all 24 rockets into launching tubes. The rocket weight is 217 kgs, but it can be handled with ease using special manipulated crane of the transloader vehicle. After placing the rocket on a kind of guiding rail, one screws up the fuse and the rocket further slides into the tube till it locks. The rocket's propellant part is at the rear with four wraparound fins, and the thermobaric warhead is in the front. It is activated by a nose-mounted impact fuse connected to the bursting charge that runs through the warhead. The TOPS-1A can deliver direct and indirect fire. It fires single rockets, pairs and salvo. The full salvo of paired launchers is only six seconds, but it is enough to show all the might of the weapon. The 220mm thermobaric rockets used are extremely powerful and cover a huge area. The full salvo hits an area of 40,000 square meters. Having seen the blast for myself, I can compare the effect to a detonation of natural gas. The thermobaric mixture penetrates buildings, bunkers, and slips into different fortifications through cracks and crevices, bringing deadly temperature and pressure. Due to a shorter range, the rocket contains fewer propellant with more explosives. As the TOS 1A operates in immediate proximity to the enemy, it should be protected, fast and agile in order to avoid the counterfire. Both the launcher and transloader vehicles can move over virtually all types of terrains, safe and quick, and negotiate various obstacles. When being in a war zone, time becomes critical. The launcher deploys and prepares for fire in just 90 seconds. After fire in less than a minute, the TOS 1A is ready to relocate or leave the battlefield for good. The vehicle is fitted with an NBC protection system, automatic fire detection and suppression pack, and it can lay a smoke screen. A bank of two 81mm electrically operated grenade launchers are mounted either side of the glasses plate.